I've defined here momentum, which is equal to uh, mv. And the reason why we defined it is because we notice that when we uh, maneuver, manipulate the equation ma and put the m inside of the derivative mv, we get something here, some, some variable here that we can express as something known as momentum. The units of momentum are units of mass would be slug times the unit of uh, V would be feet per second. And in the matrix unit system, it would be kilogram meter per second. And it has no abbreviation. It's just there's nothing else that it's known by. So kilogram meter per second. So momentum is a vector, just like velocity is a vector. And then mass is a scalar. Uh, so now the Newton's law can be expressed as F equals dP dt, which is actually known as the more general form of Newton's law. Um, As a matter of fact, when Newton first came up with his laws of motion, this is the way that he originally expressed it. He said when a force is applied on an object, it causes the momentum of the object to change. So that was his original form of the Newton's second law. Uh, force is the derivative of momentum. Okay, uh, And the reason why it's even better than the F equals MA is because When the mass of the object is changing, let's assume the mass of the object is changing as well as its velocity. So you can take the derivative of momentum and you can use the uh, product rule, dm dt times v plus m times dv dt. So it's able to account for objects whose mass is changing as a function of time. And it's able to account for objects whose velocity is changing as a function of time. And this is the force that is applied to them. So it's more general than this one. This is F equals MA. And this portion of it is only the second portion of Newton's uh, law, M, uh, M dV dt. So you see it's a little bit more general. And then from this, we define a couple other things. Uh, if you take the dt to the other side, we have F dt is equal to dp, okay? F dt is equal to dp, and then integrate both sides. And this is now a new definition. J is a impulse, which is defined as the integral of F dt. So again, that's its definition. And uh, impulse, therefore, is a vector. It's the integral of, uh, this is a vector times time. So it's a vector. Now, why is this defined uh, this way? Well, because the impulse is going to equal, when you integrate at FDT, it's equal to the integral of dp. And the integral of dp is delta p, the change in momentum. So. Uh, P final minus P initial. So this is yet another way of expressing Newton's second law. When you impart an impulse on an object, you cause its momentum to change. When you apply an impulse on an object, you, the momentum of the object is changing. The units of info, uh, impulse are the uh, Newton seconds. Uh, whatever the units of force is times time, Newton seconds or pound uh, seconds would be in the British system. Okay, so this gives us a third way of approaching problems. Now uh, we've got three major methods now of approaching problems. We have Newton's law. We've got the work energy method, and there's two forms of the work energy formula, and there is also impulse and momentum method. So let me for, uh, just pick a very simple example. Come over here. Um, <coughs> uh, 
let's say, actually I've done this example before. We can choose the same example. Why not? Let's, let's stay with that same example. Remember back when we first introduced energy and work, I chose an example to illustrate the different approaches. I think uh, it was like two kilograms and two kilograms, and I said it was being dragged uh, 15 meters. Uh, the V initial was, was it five meters per second? And then I asked, what is the V final? What, were those the numbers? You can look at your notes. And then we could just use the same numbers as, uh, as the uh, other example. I think it was like that. Uh, oh, yeah, and then something was dragging it with a force of, I believe it was uh, 10 newtons. Right? And then I did that first using uh, Newton's laws, and then we found uh, the acceleration. And then we used the V final squared is V initial squared plus 2 AD. We used that to find the final velocity, right? And then, uh, so I said, this is Newton's law approach. You first find A. Using A, you can use kinematics to find the final velocity, right? And then, uh, then I illustrated the work energy method. I said work is equal to uh, uh, force times distance. So I multiplied the force uh, times the distance. I got 150 joules. Were those the numbers? Am I remembering it right? Yeah? yeah? Same, ex those were the same exact numbers? What did we get for V final there? 13.23, uh, let me look here. 13.23. And then we did it the work energy method. And we got 150 joules. We set this equal to the change in kinetic energy. Then we got 13.23, okay, so that would be the work energy approach. And we could also approach this from an impulse momentum approach now. That would be the third approach. We would say, what's the impulse that this force is imparting on this uh, block? Okay, what's the impulse? J. It would be the integral of F dt. Well, in this case, it's the force is constant, so you don't need to integrate. So 10 times the time. Okay, so the, it, it's 10 newtons times how many seconds the force is being applied. Okay, but now did we, did we know the T? Actually, we don't know the T, right? So that method, the impulse method, would not be my favorite choice for this problem because we don't know the T. We could solve for the T using kinematics here. Uh, what would we get here? V final is V initial plus A T. We would get uh, 13.23 is uh, 5 plus... Uh, 5t, right, the initial velocity was 5, I believe, and the acceleration was also 5. So what would we get for the t? 13.23 uh, minus 5 is 8.23 divided by 5 would be 1.6, uh, and 4.6. 1.646. Okay, so this would be kind of a roundabout way of solving this. We wouldn't really do this, but if we wanted to illustrate how to do it with the impulse method, we would calculate the time and then go over here, calculate the impulse. <laughs> 